Hey everybody, the Johnny Cage here, welcoming you to another episode of The Game Cage. And today on The Game Cage, we're going to play a game that I've had on the Super Nintendo for a very long time, made by LucasArts Entertainment, believe it or not, released in September of 1993 for both the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. We are playing Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and I don't know why I got this game, to be honest with you guys. I mean, I'm sure, what, it was 1993, so I was about seven years old. I'm sure something about the fact that Zombies Eating Neighbors was on the front of the cart really appealed to me, but... You know, lo and behold, I'm not a very big fan of survival horror games, and although this is very comical, I'm still not a super big fan of it. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the difficulty of it, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, the very first level, Zombie Panic. So, right from the get-go, you're going to have a radar by pushing L and R that you can push, and you want to be able to save all the people in the level. That's your objective. It's the same thing for every level. Um... And you probably want to keep that on all the time. If not, it's it could get in the way, so it's up to you, really, whether or not it's, it's useful or not. Um, but there are up to ten people to save in every level. And up by your health bar there, you have two items that you can use. And you cycle through them with the B and the A buttons, and then you use them with the Y and the X. And the one on the left is always an offensive weapon. In this case, I started with the squirt gun, which is your very basic run-of-the-mill weapon that you're going to have in every level. And then uh, now I've got these uh, cans of Coca-Cola, which act as grenades, and you can blow up zombies with them. Oh, there's one. Yeah, got him. Uh, zombies are very easy to kill. Only take one shot to take out. We'll only do one bar of damage when they hit you. So, nothing much to worry about there. The downside to them, as you might imagine, as is true in most zombie movies, is they tend to come in hordes. That can be a problem. But anyhow, enough about that. Let's just grab these last two cheerleader ladies. Uh, oh, why not use a key to open up the door? You need a key to open up any door, by the way, so always make sure you have keys. Very important item. Um, and speaking of important items, you have all sorts of items in this game. Like, I just used the fire extinguisher there. All sorts of really fun uh, weapons to use. It's just ridiculous how much fun you're going to have just playing around with mixing and matching them. So it looks like we got everyone in the level. Boom! All victims save bonus. Very nice. And now we're moving right along! To level 2, these first two levels, especially that first one for obvious reasons, very much a tutorial, just kind of get your feet wet in it. The difficulty in this game really ramps up fast. Really, really fast. We're going to already see a huge increase in the number of zombies on the screen. Um, people are going to be constantly at risk for getting killed. Um, just keep in mind that you only have to save one person um, to progress through the level. Even if all the others get killed, as long as you grab one, you're, you're fine. You can just sit there and wait for the other people to get killed, although that might take quite a while, so I would not really recommend it. Um, let's see, there are 48 levels to this game. You get a password after uh, beating four levels. You'll get a new password. Only a four-character password, so that's nice of them. Uh, boom! Bazooka through the wall. Yeah, anytime you see a crack on the wall or those hedges, see the like, kind of the dark spots on the hedges there? They're pretty, pretty large dark spots. You can also blow through the hedges with a bazooka, just the same. Um, and then you can always, should always check cupboards whenever you're in a house. Check cupboards for uh, any sort of items. Not getting too lucky with finding them right now. Oh, oh, looks like that archaeologist guy over there is going to be dead. Oh, yeah. Boo and he lets out a shriek, and you see a little blue spirit appear. Uh, don't worry about it, though. You know, you're not going to save everybody. That's just the nature of the game. <laughs> you know, the game teaches you some very important life lessons. You can't save everyone. Oh, man. How oh, terrible. I used to play this game all the time, actually, for one reason and one reason alone. When I first got it, that is. Not not later on. Not now in life, at least. But this was the only game I had that was compatible with the Game Genie. And it was the only time I ever bought some sort of cheating device for any system at all. And it was the Game Genie for Super Nintendo. And this was the only game I had codes for. And, you know, this was back in the day before the internet was around. So... Kind of disappointing to get Game Genie. Oh man, I'm gonna be able to do all these crazy things in games. No, no, I think this was the only one. Maybe it was compatible with Super Mario World. I mean, that would make sense that it would be, but I really can't remember. Anyhow, that level, nothing too special there. But now, oh, now things are gonna start to pick up just, just a little bit, just a tiny bit. I hope you understand how the uh, game works at this point, because otherwise, this could be kind of a tough level. And it also, also introduces one of my favorite horror villains of all time. Terror in Isle 5. So, uh, here we got the very much uh, Dawn of the Dead looking mall scenario, and a lot of these levels repeat themselves, so kind of get used to them, but they get much tougher. I think there's a level in here later on where they have giant ants. Not fun. So, hey, look! It's evil Chucky dolls! Yay! 
everyone's favorite horror villain that scared them to death as a kid. I know he did for me, but uh, he is a pain in the ass, because he'll throw um, axes in eight directions at you, and if he sees you, gets you in his line of sight, he'll just beeline right for you. Um, it's actually kind of funny, if you hit him enough times, I think he takes like five shots to die, but sometimes he won't die, he'll just become a flaming doll that's chasing you. It's very terrifying and comical at the same time. I'll see if I can get one of them to do it. I don't know, you, you can kind of see it for a second there, but then he just he just flames out. Uh, lots of new items too, I mean, we're in a grocery store after all, mall, grocery store type place. Um, potions! You might have noticed me get a potion in the last uh, level as well, I haven't used it yet, and there's a particular reason for that, but uh... I'm gonna save that for the next level. We got some uh, tomatoes. Uh, not much distance on these, but well, it took them. Took out the Chucky doll in two shots, so that's not too bad. You grab the baby over there. Gotta save the baby. We got some popsicles as well. A lot of these weapons, as you can see, they have the same sort of uh, attack animation. Uh, later on, you can get like forks and knives and silverware. Um, well, silverware would be forks and knives, but plates to uh, throw. And they do the same thing. Uh, but later on, the weapons get a lot more innovative and strange. So, grab these guys, and that's gonna do it. Let's get out of this crazy evil doll hell. Oh, man. Uh, actually, that level's not too bad. It's not very big, which is the probably the best part about it. But now, we are approaching the last level I'm gonna show you guys. And the reason I went all the way to level 4 was because this is where the game takes the steepest jump in difficulty. Like, this is difficulty spike number one right here. Because you have new horror icon, Jason Voorhees, with his uh, wife beater and uh, chainsaw. Although I don't think he ever used a chainsaw in any movies. Maybe he did. I don't know. I haven't seen them all. Or if I have, it's been a long, long time. But uh, one of the items we picked out, uh, picked up in the shopping mall were these clowns. And you drop them and it will cause uh, them to spin or them to attack the clowns rather than attack you, and you're really going to want to use that item a lot. Or, you can always just use the potion. Come on, potion. Nope, wrong button. Uh, potion, yes! And the potion turns you into the Hulk! Or a purple version of the Hulk, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, you can't do anything in this form except for just attack, um, but his punches are as strong as a shot with a rocket launcher is. So you can also blow through walls, as you can see here, just go through the head, just no problem. But you can see how many shots it took to kill that one Jason. It probably takes the equivalent of about 15 to 20 bazooka blasts to kill a Jason, so uh, you got to be really strategic. You will die for sure if you just run in there and try to fight him. So, my pro tip of the day, do not just go crazy and just try to attack Jason. It doesn't work. Never worked in the movies, not gonna work in Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Well, let's see, there's always, whenever you see a big hedge, oh, I was gonna punch that big hedge, because normally that's a sign that uh, there's something behind there. Oh, and now, might as well use the other potion. This one is a random potion, it can do anything. Sometimes it'll turn you into a zombie, sometimes it'll do nothing. Uh, and when it turns into you into a zombie, you, uh, you just don't do anything. You can't take damage, I don't think, but you just walk around aimlessly, like a zombie, and the game just takes you wherever the hell it feels like it, and you just kind of have to deal with that for a little while. The ghost, I don't believe, takes any damage, although he can see you and he'll still follow you around, and you can't use any items, so it's, you know, definitely not very good. The, the random potion itself is pretty weak, not a very good item. So let's see, oop, there's a baby down there, quick bazooka blast, and oop, I was lucky I was able to sneak through there, I honestly wasn't sure if I would be able to or not. Oh, come on, cheerleader lady. Alright, good, good, we're making progress here. Oh, down to half-life. Quick heal up. Uh, ch 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 I have to get up somehow. I think that this will take me where I want to go. Oh, jeez. Oh, man, they're ganging up on me now. Oh, well, might want to drop some more clowns. See, there you go. Distracts them pretty well. Oh, and turbo boots! Woo! Sonic boom! Sonic boom! Oh, I've been playing too much Sonic lately, I guess. Uh, anyhow, go through the exit. We're done here, guys. Oh, I'm getting out of here. This game, this game's tough. Very tough. The difficulty is atrocious. If you want to play through this game, though, it's a heck of a lot more fun with another friend. The passwords are short, only four characters long, so I would recommend it still. I mean, it's just fun if you're looking for a good two-player game for the Super Nintendo. You'll get a few laughs, have a few beers maybe while you're doing it. You'll probably get bored after a while of constantly dying, but... You know, you'll make it through the first four or five levels at least before that happens. So anyhow, guys, this has been the Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment if you have not. And I'll talk to all of you guys tomorrow.